With the frame and the x-axis constructed, it's time to move on to our next bag of parts and concentrate on the next axis, after which the printer will really start taking shape. So on it is with the z-axis. We're going to get stuck straight in with this part of the build, so we'll start with reaching for the z-axis electronics bag from the respective box as well as the Z-axis plastic components from the 3D printed parts box. Two bags to collect here. Starting with the plastic parts then, in particular our pair of Z-motor brackets. These are printed using Prusament PC blend carbon fibre this time round and generally look a lot cleaner than the predecessor, so it's not just a colour change here. Also note that these are not identical, there is a left and a right piece, easily identified with this tooth on the side of the part which hooks around the frame thus making it easy to distinguish the right from the left. While installation is also very similar to the Mark IV, the order parts are installed is slightly different, and we start with our set of steel rods, specifically the slightly shorter and thicker set from the two remaining pairs. So with those to hand, give each a quick wipe down, before gently inserting the first rod into the largest hole on the flat side of the Z-axis motor bracket. Push down into place while taking extra care to ensure the rod goes in straight and not at an angle. You'll find an inspection hole in the side of the bracket. Use this to check if the rod is completely inserted, leaving no gap between the rod and the bottom of the hole. Repeat the same process on the opposite side. With that battle won, we can attach these to the printer frame. Before doing so, with an M3x10 screw in hand, Proceed to insert the screw into each of the three available threaded holes in the bottom corner of the frame. Notice I'm not screwing the printed part into place just yet, the frame is finished with an anodized coating, so by inserting just the screw alone, I'm cleaning out the thread first, which makes sure the screw will go in straighter and easier when we do install the part. Repeat the same with all three threaded holes on both sides of the frame. Now we can go ahead and install the motor brackets into place taking care not to dislodge the inserted rods. Remember the tooth that will hook around the outer edge of the frame and proceed to secure into place using three M3x10 cap head screws. You may find it easier to reposition the printer frame on its back for easier access here. Repeat on the opposite side with a further three M3x10 cap head screws before placing the frame back on its feet. With the brackets in place, it's time to reach for the two Z-axis motors, which we'll install next. These are the motors with the threaded rods attached, so handle with care so as to not damage the motors in any way. Just like the printed brackets, these motors have a dedicated position. The left motor incorporates a shorter cable, while the motor with the longer cable goes on the right side of the printer, simply so that the cables reach neatly back to the electronics board. With both correctly identified, proceed to reach for the two rubber pads and place these on the surface of each motor, taking care to ensure the pads are correctly aligned with the screw holes in the motors. We're ready to install now, so starting with the shorter cabled left motor, orientated so that the motor cables are facing towards the rear of the printer, feed through the bracket, and once in position secure with four M3x10 screws, do not tighten them completely at the moment, we just need to get the motor in place for now and need some slight adjustment space, so we'll tighten down later. Also ensure the rubber pad is sitting flush between the motor and the plastic motor bracket. Repeat the same process with the right side motor, again making sure this is the unit with the longer motor cable, which is facing towards the rear, and again using four M3x10 screws. With that done, guide both the Z motor cables under the notch in the frame and towards the electronics box we installed earlier. Looking at the main electronics board then, the two motor cables will be installed to the third and fourth slots at the very top edge of the board. Both cables are labelled, so the motor cable labelled ZL connects into the left slot and the ZR labelled cable into the right. Don't worry too much about keeping cables tidy just yet, we'll do that later when everything is installed. We're ready to install the X-axis assembly we constructed in the previous section now, so with that to hand, as well as the X holder tool close by, gently slide the bearings at each end over the smooth rods we just inserted, being careful to keep things as straight as possible so as to not lose any of the balls within the bearings. 
with the X axis carriage to one side for the moment, use the X holder tool, so the same tool we used to guide the zip ties into place earlier on, to hold the X axis in place by hooking it onto the top of the frame and then secure the top X axis rod into the bottom hook of the tool. It's important to place the X holder at the center of the frame and the X axis. If not, centering results could be inaccurate since the X axis won't be as level as possible. Nevertheless, with the X axis being held in position, we'll tighten down all motor screws that we left loosely in place earlier. The aim here is to get these nice and tight, but keep the top of the threaded rod as centered in the X axis holes as possible. So proceed to tweak the screws until the threaded rod is as close to the center of the X end idler hole as much as possible. It doesn't have to be completely perfect, but it certainly shouldn't touch the surface of the printed part at all. If done properly, the X axis should move alongside the Z axis rods nice and freely, without the threaded rods touching the plastic parts. This makes way for our next component to sit in place by causing minimal stress on the Z axis motors, the trapezoidal nut, which you'll find in your motors box. Proceed to screw the first nut into the right threaded rod in the correct orientation so that the smaller end of the nut fits into the hole into the X end. If it doesn't, the threaded rod is incorrectly centered and you'll need to readjust the motor screws to center the rod before proceeding. Once in place, secure the trapezoidal nut with the two M3x10 screws. It does not matter which holes in the nut you use. Bear in mind there may be a small gap between the nut and the printed part. Tightening the two screws will cling the nut completely to the part. Repeat the same process in order to install the nut on the left side Z axis too. We're now ready to finish off the Z axis by securing into place using the two 3D printed top brackets found in the package. Before installing these, just like we did at the bottom, take a single M3x10 screw and proceed to screw in and out of the two holes in the top corner of the frame. You'll find this easier to reach using the ball end of the appropriate sized supplied Allen key. Before repeating on the opposite side, just to clean out the threads in the frame and make part installation easier. Now we can place the top left bracket on the smooth steel rod and gently push down to align the holes with the frame, as well as the screw holes before securing into position with two M3x10 screws. Again, the ball end of the correct Allen key can be used for the screw behind the threaded rod, which makes the job much easier. Repeat the same process on the right side in order to install the top right bracket and secure into position using another two M3x10 screws. With those in place, proceed to rotate both threaded rods at the same time in order to move the X axis assembly a little higher and release the X holder completely. The printer is starting to take shape nicely now and your unit should be looking exactly like this example at this stage. So both X and Z axes are complete and now we can move our attention onto the extruder assembly. We'll start by centering the extruder carriage as much as possible in order to provide ample space to work, followed by rotating both Z axis rods simultaneously in order to move the carriage down a little. Now we need our main extruder cable, a long cable with plenty of individual wires. Notice how some are twisted together while others are not, we'll come back to this shortly. Also notice how one end has a small white label while the other hasn't. Proceed to feed the end that doesn't have the white label from the back of the printer through the gap between the belt and the upper rod. Now we can divide the twisted wires and straight cables from each other before guiding the straight wires through the channel in the back of the X carriage, followed by inserting the twisted cables. This way everything is neatly aligned. For the moment you'll want to leave around 2cm of cable protruding from the top in order to give yourself enough space to connect the cable to the next electronics board, which Prusa refer to as the love board. You'll find this in the smaller electronics box, neatly wrapped in protective packaging. Again, this is an electronic part, so care should be taken when handling, trying to hold from the edges as much as possible. Nevertheless, go ahead and proceed to connect the extruder main cable to the one available port that's big enough on the love board. Working from the rear on the printer carriage for this next step, use a single M3x6 screw to attach the love board to the back of the X carriage, making sure the screw is nice and snug. We no longer need the extra cable length on the front, so very gently pull on the extruder main cable to reduce the bundle on the connector side. 
there must be a minimal loop, otherwise the cable will interfere with other parts later in the build. Also note, the cables must not interfere with the extruder motor compartment on the right side. Ok, so now we're going back to working on the rear for the next few steps and we'll begin with the extruder cable guide. More 3D printed parts here, although we're specifically looking at the bottom piece for the moment, easy to distinguish as it's the one with the screw hole in one end. Use that screw hole to push through a single M3 by 40 screw before attaching to the bottom rear of the extruder carriage, taking care to keep all cables out of the way here and tightening the screw down until snug. With that in place, we're going to cover the rear of the carriage next using the 3D printed carriage cover from your parts bag. Prepare it by placing a single rubber pad into the recess located in one side. Next, reach for your piece of nylon filament. Notice how it has a bend on either end. Insert one bend into the small hole in the left side of the cable guide we just installed. Bear in mind the nylon filament should be bending upwards here. If it's pointing down instead, remove and reinstall before proceeding. This is a very important step. When ready, ensure the marking on the upper bearing is still facing outwards and proceed to place the carriage rear cover into position on the back of the carriage, arranging the installed cables so that they protrude out of the gap. Take extra care here to ensure none of the wires are being pinched in between the printed parts. The cover can then be secured into position with two M3 by 18 screws through the two lowermost holes and a single M3 by 10 screw into the upper hole. Almost there now, all that's left here is to root and tidy the extruder cable run. So begin by inserting two zip ties through the bottom of the cable holder from right to left with the teeth side facing upwards before reaching for a textile sleeve. You'll find two pieces included in the x-axis bag. We'll be using the longest and widest piece for now. So with that to hand, wrap one end around both the nylon filament as well as the extruder wire bundle. Keep a 1cm gap between the sleeve and the X carriage itself before placing down on the cable holder and covering with the top cover. We can now proceed to tighten both zip ties down into the available channels in the cable holder and so the heads fit into the pockets in the plastic part. Finally, cut off the excess cable tie. At this point, move the X carriage to the very left edge and check to ensure the cable tie heads do not touch the side of the power supply cover. There should be a small gap as in my example here. Any touching could result in calibration errors later. We can now continue to wrap the textile sleeve around the rest of the cable bundle as well as the nylon filament, keeping the filament facing upwards as we go along. Again note how the bundle naturally wants to twist upwards, which is what we're aiming for here. Next, use the remaining shorter textile sleeve from the X carriage bag to wrap the X axis motor wires. Note the sleeve may not look long enough to cover the entire length of motor cable, which is normal, so no need to be concerned. On to our next 3D printed part now, this small cable holder that will attach the opposite end of the cables with the sleeves installed. Begin by inserting two M3 square nuts all the way into the holder, both from the same side. And next, take the remaining bent end of the nylon filament and insert it into the end of the channel in the holder after which the extruder main cable bundle can sit in the larger channel alongside the nylon filament. Guide this bundle in freely without twisting or rotating it whatsoever. Before guiding the X motor cable, again without twisting or bending, into the smaller channel alongside. Note how it passes over the larger extruder bundle just inserted. Nevertheless, proceed to install the cover, trapping the cable bundles inside and secure into position with two M3 by 18 screws going straight into the square nuts we previously inserted, before wrapping a single cable tie around the extruder cable bundle where there is a convenient recess in the clip. Finally, push the loose cable ends through the hole in the top of the electronics chassis and lower the clip down into position before securing with two M3 by 10 screws. Stop and compare cable runs. So notice the curve in the extruder cable run as well as how the X motor cable rotates round. It's important your setup looks just like this, since it keeps both sets of cables completely free, meaning the carriage has complete range of motion along the X axis, as well as anywhere along the Z axis. If your cable run looks any different, you could run into issues when printing later. 
leave the ends of the cables in the electronics box free for the moment, these will be connected later in the build. And that brings us to the end of our Z-axis assembly. The printer is really starting to take shape now, so in the next chapter we'll continue to concentrate on the carriage and build up the main extruder. 